Hey there, I'm Matt. I'm the guy behind Warthammer Season 1. I'll be the one talking your ear off for the next however many infinities. First off, let me thank you for tuning in. I'll take for granted that you enjoyed Warthammer enough to come back for more and hear me talk ad nauseum about the project. So thank you. It's much appreciated. Where to begin? Well, there's a lot of really cool battle reports out there, especially in video form, and some people are doing some really interesting things with them. That said, I always thought it would be a neat addition to sprinkle in some voiceover here and there in certain areas just for emphasis. So, for example, during an important movement phase, they might zoom in on the Imperial Guard as you hear, Higgins, I need a gun line on that ridge! Or an orc squad that miraculously makes all their saving throws after being shot at. <laughs> Wheeze orcs! The humies think that's enough to stop us! <laughs> or while Chaos Marines are making a crucial charge maneuver at Loyalists, you might get to hear... First, we will drain them of their pride. Then, we will drain them of their blood. So with that in mind, I discovered on YouTube in early 2020 a group of guys that were making some extremely progressive battle reports, adding in all sorts of special effects and really high production values. So I thought, you know, they might be open-minded to something like this, adding some voiceover. So I contacted them. Amazingly, they contacted me back, and we set up a meeting. A meeting over Zoom. And I was probably a little overzealous during the meeting. Uh, I really thought this would be something fun to do. But they did give me a chance. And basically what they said was they wanted to start making additional videos to go with their battle reports to teach people how to play the game. So by way of an example, they said, maybe, you know, let's start with the shooting phase and, and targeting selection and that type of thing. So they were kind enough to send me some footage of their battle reports and footage that they thought might work for this sort of uh, tutorial and teaching people about the shooting phase. And I didn't know in advance what it would be about. Um, it just so happened to be Ultramarines versus Death Guard. But they send me this footage and said, you know, see what you come up with. So two things popped up in my mind instantly, which was, A, I wanted really quick turnaround. I wanted to show that uh, I was really invested in doing something like this and interested. And I also thought, let me try to overachieve here and not just return one, but two. So I gave myself a deadline of a week to have something back to them. They didn't put any sort of deadline on me. Uh, but I impose that on myself. So within six days, uh, without knowing anything that they were going to send me, I turned around two videos to them. One was about a minute and a half, and it was a serious video using their serious battle report footage uh, about the shooting phase and how you have to make targeting selections. The other one I had a lot of fun with, and it was this silly, ridiculous video that involved, yeah, the shooting phase and targeting, but it was all over the place. And that video, I think, clocked in at about six and a half minutes, six minutes, 50 seconds, something like that. Well, I sent those, and I heard back. They were very nice, and they said, eh, you know, let us mull it over. We'll think about it. And I didn't hear back, and then like a month or so, I guess it was July, uh, the new edition came out. The ninth edition rules were revealed, and they got back to me and said, look, you know, uh, now that the ninth edition rules are out, we really want to kind of absorb those. And if we're going to make these tutorial videos, we would want them to be relevant. And so they need to be the ninth edition. So we're gonna need some time. So that might've been a polite way of getting out of it. I don't know, uh, but it made sense. But I gotta tell you what I sent them was just a complete mess on the comedy one or the one that I was trying to be funny. It's pretty much the same. The, the, the one that's up there now that I made, I think, it's like 10 minutes and 30 seconds, and the one I submitted to them was 6 minutes and 40, 50 seconds, something like that. So it was largely the same. But as you can imagine, it just didn't, it wouldn't have made any sense. So I so don't blame them. They, they probably just thought I was this insane guy that they needed to get rid of. 
you know, not that I would compare anything I do to Star Wars or to the great Marx Brothers, but they must have, you know, the footage was this very serious battle report. So it would have been like watching the footage from a Star Wars film while listening to the audio from a Marx Brothers movie. It didn't match. You know, there was no bolter-shaped cake that I was referring to. There was no sign about a welcome party that I was referring to. There was no yard gnome to be seen in their battle report footage. There was no beast of Nurgle in the scene. It was Nurgle, but not a beast of Nurgle. And then I had singing and a music phase. And so I don't blame them. <laughs> they must have been thinking, how do we get away from this lunatic? Bottom line, I just appreciated the opportunity to try, really. That meant a lot. Anyway... So after about six months or so, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do something with this. I really enjoyed it. I don't know how I'm going to go about it, uh, but uh, let me try it. The only, the closest experience I had really was as a kid, I had a Super 8 movie camera, which used actual film that you had to develop, you know, as the, the movie film with the holes on the sides. And you had to have a projector to play it back. And I would make little movies with my Star Wars action figures, and you could scratch the film to make lasers and all this type of stuff. And I did that as a kid, uh, but uh, not too much since then. So this is going to be a real learning experience. So already having this YouTube channel, I knew with this particular Warthammer project, which I hadn't even named at this point, I was gonna wanna make something a lot more visually elaborate than the earlier videos. Uh, most of the earlier videos I made were just radio plays or podcasts. Uh, basically, hopefully, there was full sound design, but the image was just a still image. So, for example, in the Ask series, I had this faux talk show, but then it was people from the 41st millennium, right? You had Karn the Betrayer being interviewed or Ulrich the Slayer being interviewed by this, you know, in the actor's studio or Dick Cavett sort of person and uh you know they were fun to do but they, they just weren't going to cut it anymore i was going to have to get a lot more visually impressive which meant upgrading my video editing software uh and learning it as i went so before i was using imovie and that was a great product uh, but i knew for what i was going to want to do with this it wasn't going to cut the mustard so to speak so i got final cut pro which i had never ever used before and was going to try to fit a square peg in a round hole, so to speak, and get this thing done. Because I didn't know what I was doing and I was going to be learning, I knew this first project was going to be very raw and crude and clunky. So I decided, since I was trying to do a comedy or a humor piece anyway, let's just embrace this. Let's just totally dive in and lean into the overall corny style and just have fun with the project. That might mean uh, seeing some wires or some strings moving stuff around, you know, whatever. So, for example, I have several sky backdrops, but I decided to pick the one that has the crease in it. That was fun. And uh, on Bill the Scout, there's two for sure scenes where he's delivering his line and while moving him, uh, he bumps the building and the whole building shakes. And yeah, I could have done those again, but here and there, eh, kind of fun. Why not? So what did I use to make this? Well, I'm fortunate enough to have both a PC and a Mac, and I did use both to make this, each for different things. In terms of the recording the audio, I use Pro Tools. I do have a subscription to that, so I recorded everything on Pro Tools. But I'll be honest, I'm just not as adept at Pro Tools as I would like to be. I still feel there's a lot of stuff for me to learn, and it was just gonna prolong how long this project took and I didn't really want that to happen, so I did end up defaulting to Audacity to do all my audio editing, which is a free program you can find online to edit audio. And I knew the ins and outs of that, and it just meant I could streamline the process. So I did do the audio editing with Audacity. The microphone I used and am using now is an Apogee microphone, and they're a small company just based here close to me in Santa Monica to shoot all the video and make the stills or photographs. I use the phone that I use every day 
to listen to music, check email, go on the internet, et cetera, et cetera. And that's an iPhone 8. And that has whatever the current software, you know, 14 point whatever. For the video editing, I did use Final Cut Pro. Again, that was a completely new program to me. So there was a big learning curve there. It seemed like I was having to look up something every two seconds. Another program I used was Motion. And I only needed that a couple of times for this particular edition of Warhammer. So for example, at the beginning, the sparkle on the 32 millimeter bass, that sparkle was used with motion. Of course, the audio was separate. And then during the music phase, the karaoke scene, right at the beginning there, there's fireworks. And those fireworks were done with motion. PowerPoint, which most people have access to on some level, I uh, used a lot of that. Uh, especially for lettering. The Warthammer logo was made in PowerPoint and then transferred over to another program. The party sign was all made in PowerPoint. So things like that I use PowerPoint a lot for. And then I use another program, GIMP, a lot. I, I think that stands for Graphic Image Manipulation Program or GNU Image Manipulation Program, which I don't know what the GNU stands for. Anyway, G-I-M-P. And that's basically a free version of Photoshop online. So anyone has access to that as well. And I use that for a lot of things. Again, there was a bit of a learning curve on that, on the finer points to that. For example, the Warthammer logo I made in PowerPoint, put into GIMP, and in GIMP, I added the warts to the T. Uh, also, GIMP was great for making masks. By that, I mean you could cover up things you didn't want your audience to see. So, for example, at the end where the two Marines flip their bases up, I made a mask using GIMP to hide the wire work that was used to make those flip. Also, for the Auspex, so that Brother Swagger could talk to the Sister of Battle on that handheld. So basically what I'm getting to is a lot of this stuff you probably have access to. So you shouldn't be intimidated about making one of these. They're a lot of fun. Uh, that said, they do take a lot of time. So, uh, how long did this take me? Well, if you were to line up all the hours and package them into consecutive eight to 12 hour chunks, and a lot of the days were 12 hour days, I'd say this took about mm, three and a half to four months from the initial concept to the final upload onto YouTube. Yeah, about that. Now, some time was mitigated by the fact that the Ultramarines and certain other miniatures were already painted, especially the cityscape I already had painted for my own games. That would have, that just removed a lot of time. <laughs> but I did have to paint a few other things like the Lord of Contagion and the Pox Walkers and I paint really slow, unfortunately. So there's that, but hopefully you can see the progress in painting skill. Those are fourth edition Ultramarines that I got with the Battle of McCrag box set and immediately painted them after. And they kind of show their date. Uh, hopefully the Lord of Contagion and the Pox Walkers appear to be better painted. But Additionally, something that added time to the project, as I mentioned before, was the learning of the new computer programs and the software. It really was at times like learning a whole new language. The Final Cut Pro, it's a great program, but if you don't know anything about it, it's almost like going from driving a car to trying to fly a helicopter. But moving forward, hopefully things will move a lot smoother and more efficiently. There was some additional story I wanted to add to the project, beyond what was in the original six to seven minutes. And since I knew I was going to be doing this all myself and not be limited to or rely on someone else's video or images, I could really tailor the project to my ideas. So I added the prologue, or the previously, on Warhammer. I wrote that whole extra segment and had to record those voices. And then the end, I added some stuff. Certainly the bit with the stormtrooper. There was no stormtrooper in that initial battle report, so I wanted to add that in now and some extra stuff with the Emperor. So after I got everything ready to go and actually start filming, it was probably about the third week of January 2021. And at this point, I knew I wanted a very stark contrast to the Grimdark, 
I wanted this to be very sunshiny and full of nonsense. So I was going to use a lot of daylight. And in fact, the table was going to be set up right next to a window. But being January with daylight savings, uh, the sun was going down very early. So I decided to wait, basically, until the time changed again, which was in early, May, uh, early March, rather. And I looked up online, uh, for those of you looking for an almanac lesson here, basically where I am in the Los Angeles area, each day I waited added about a minute of daylight. So with the extra hour and then waiting each additional day, I could add more time to shoot the video, basically, per day. And this is because I wasn't going to be able to get it all done in one day. I don't have a dedicated area to game, which meant I was going to have to tear down the whole set and table each night and then in the morning set it back up again. So I wanted to utilize time that was going to have the most daylight. So I actually waited uh, until about April. I think the first day of filming was April, or shooting video, I should say, like April 12th, just to have that additional daylight time. And my intention was to film during the day, and then after the sun went down, I could start editing whatever video I had. And my process tends to be, after the writing is finished, to record and edit all the audio to completion, then move on to shooting and editing of the video. And the shooting itself uh, took just the video, again, nothing else, but just shooting the video 11... I think it was 12 days, 12 days, including the emperor scene, because I did do the emperor absolutely first. I knew he was going to be a big chunk of this. And if I couldn't get him to work, maybe I would just scrap the whole project. Speaking of the emperor, uh, sometimes your mistakes can turn to gold. So the very first thing I did was try to film the emperor. The first day of shooting on the table was the previously stuff. But when I was doing the emperor, I had him in front of that sky backdrop and it was the camera on a tripod my hand puppeteering, I guess you would say, maneuvering. I wanted him to be floaty in the sky, just holding him in front of the camera. And for whatever reasons, the iPhone insisted on focusing on the background. It just was not focusing on the emperor. All right, maybe he needs more light. And sure enough, putting some light on him helped. But just the way I was doing this, I had to hold the light. So I have one hand with the emperor and I'm trying to do this performance with that. And the other hand, trying to be as still as possible. So it was kind of like chewing gum and walking. And on the playback, I saw that the light would bob down into the frame once in a while. All right, this take is ruined. I'm gonna have to do it again. But I continued to watch it just to see what other mistakes I made and how else I could improve that particular performance. And in watching it at some point, my arms started to sink. I go, that's moving with them. And it kind of looks like a halo. That's, wow, maybe I can use that. So the third take I did was actually to put it in there on purpose, and it worked out really well. I thought that was a really nice effect that I wouldn't have had otherwise. It was purely a mistake that worked out. And the idea with the halo was, look, it's the emperor. He's caused a lot of strife and misery in the universe. I don't know how tightly that halo should be on, if he should have one at all. So I made it very loosey-goosey, almost as if it's on a tether or a rubber band, and it kind of has this delay as it moves with him. You know, so if he moved really quick, it wasn't going to be able to exactly follow him, but normal movements, it would loosely sort of follow him. I just thought that was a fun little bit to add in there. And also to tie in with that, when he disappears at the end of his scene, he doesn't ascend into the heavens. No, he descends. So take from that what you will. So the moral of the story is, Sometimes those mistakes can really work out and, you know, just go with them. Try different things, see what happens. I think that Halo adds such a great dimension to it, and I really wouldn't have had it had the iPhone just focused on the Emperor like I wanted to to begin with. So there you go. What else do you want to know? Uh, oh, how about the Nurgle Rot? The Nurgle Rot was a homebrew that I made that you too can make. That was easy enough. I'm not much of a cook, but I knew I would want pudding and jello. So you can buy those little pre-made cups of both of those things. So the Nurgle Rot consisted of part vanilla tapioca pudding and part green jello. And I scooped some of each out into a bowl and mixed it to the desired consistency of disgust. And voila! 
Now, some folks might like their Nurgle rot a little greener, and I get that. But that whole nuclear green, or almost neon green, I don't know. I just see mine as being a little bit more snot-based, mucusy. And the tapioca did a really nice job of that, but also the chunks of the green jello helped add to that. And of course, the Beast of Nurgle droppings were a chunk of green jello. Well, regardless of what you thought of Warthammer, it was a lot of fun for me to do, and I certainly learned a great deal. There was always challenges to overcome. Sometimes those challenges were overcome by using paper printouts and gluing a popsicle stick to the back end of them as a handle. Other times it was just wanting to do something really unique with the camera movements, so having to figure out how to make the camera zoom all over the place and swirl around while not having a dolly at all and just using my arm. Oh, hey, here comes the scene with... Okay, so I haven't done these Nurgle, these Death Guard guys' voices in almost a full year. Yeah, a full year. Let me just see if I can pull this off here. Somebody told me they were feeling ill. The Duran Pox Pox, the Duran Pox. All right, well, <laughs> maybe on the playback, that won't be so great. Anywho, I highly, highly, highly recommend to anyone who has an idea, who has the time and is willing to put in the effort to go ahead and just try one of these. And in part, that's why I listed the different things I use to make this. It's very rewarding and it's a just a lot of fun to do with your free time, I must say. Although, having to stay indoors during a lockdown, that didn't hurt either. So saying that, I do have two more episodes, or I should say seasons, in mind for this series for sure. One I've already actually started to work on, but it's just too early to tell if it's going to come out in 2021 or not. It's, I would guess, 50-50 right now, but it's in the writing stages. Also, I have multiple serious action adventure and horror projects I would love to get video done for. Uh, they're swirling around in my head. Some are already on paper. Some are 40K, some are not. It's really just a matter of having the available time to do them at this point. Zoiks, <laughs> is that what time it is? All right. Uh, according to the Codex, we need to reel this in and bring it to a conclusion. Anywho... Thanks so much for hearing me out and indulging me to rattle on like this. I really appreciate it. All of you take care, be safe out there, and hopefully we'll be able to get together again during the next video. But wait, there's still more. Might we entice you with one of these other delectable offerings?